Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're going to talk about Resident Evil on Netflix, uh, one of the worst rated shows ever on Netflix, and yet somehow it dethroned Stranger Things as the number one streaming show on the platform. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, Japan weighing in on the show. Japan thinks it's terrible. Of course they do. Everybody thinks this show is terrible. It's getting slammed all over the place. Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes, um, lots of uh, uh, low budget, unnecessary changes, uh, race swapping, gender swapping. You know the deal, right? Like pretty much Resident Evil, from what I've seen of it, is the worst case scenario for wokeism infecting a franchise. Like it is one of the most egregious examples that that uh, you will ever see. And hopefully with Netflix purging a lot of its uh, uh, upcoming shows and uh, cleaning house, hopefully this never happens again. That when they get the rights to something like Resident Evil that has a built-in fan base, that they actually respect the source material and give people what they expect. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. They lost a million subs. Maybe it'll slap some sense into them. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 272,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciated. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Uh, comment and like. All that jazz. All that YouTuber jazz. So, we'll talk about the ratings of the show first. Then we'll talk about how somehow this damn thing wound up beating Stranger Things. And then we're going to talk about Japan. Japan hating this show too. So NME Resident Evil is one of Netflix's worst rated shows ever. Um, the show dropped last week. The ratings have been very low already with Rotten Tomatoes showing an audience score of just 25%. The series has an average user rating of 3.6% on IMDb. This would make the show one of the lowest rated series on IMDb with a list ranging from 1.3 to 4.4 on the scale. The new Resident Evil series uh, focuses on Albert Wesker and his two children. Uh, and of course, they made a lot of changes, a lot of race swapping, a lot of stupid current year humor. I've, I haven't sat through the entire series. I've seen clips. Uh, it's memeable. I mean, the whole thing is like an effing low rent parody of Resident Evil. I mean, it makes the movies look like a freaking masterpiece. Somehow, the show is getting more views than Stranger Things. I mean, this is this is crazy. Netflix, uh, Netflix's new number one show dethrones Stranger Things despite the negative reviews. Brand recognition and people want to watch a train wreck in real time. Resident Evil stormed to number one in the streamer's chart, dethroning Stranger Things season four, and that is despite negative reviews and word of mouth. The video game adaptation currently sits at a 51% critical score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 25% audience score. In contrast, Stranger Things Season 4 has an 89% critic and audience score. Um, welcome to Raccoon City, bitches. Uh, watching the new Resident Evil series on Netflix, the direction they've taken, this, these are some of the reviews. It is odd, says one viewer, disappointing in so many ways, not worth going into detail over. Um, garbage. It's just absolute garbage. Uh, it, it really is. It's like, just watch a couple of clips. You can find the clips out there. It's just absolute trash. I mean, Resident Evil's never been high art, right? But they could have done so, so much better. Not great at all. As a longtime fan of the movie and video game franchise, I wanted to like the show. The show starts slow and stays slow. It feels like a teen family drama set in the background of a zombie apocalypse rather than a zombie action show. If you had just shown me clips of the Netflix Resident Evil movie and asked me to guess what it was, I would say, is this the new Jordan Peele movie? Because it sure as hell doesn't look like Resident Evil. There's nothing about this that looks like Resident Evil. Um, Games Radar gave it a bad review too. Unfortunately, the streamer's new live action Resident Evil series does little rise above what's come before. A show that falls apart thanks to questionable creative choices, inconsistent production values, and odd reluctance to dip into the source material's deep pool of lore mythology. Why does this exist? I mean, seriously, it's just it's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Uh, Japan hates it. Of course, Japan hates it. 
Senkaku Complex put this together. Japanese fans criticized Netflix's Resident Evil as more, more like politically correct hazard. Politically correct hazard. Um, talking about the scores, we already went over that. 53% and 22% as of, I think, yesterday. And uh, here are some of the reactions. I'm watching Netflix's Biohazard right now, but it is politically correct hazard. As expected, it's such a waste to go with Wesker again when you're going with a new approach for the story. Uh, the last CG anime Resident Evil on Netflix was pretty iffy. All I have to say is ne the Netflix Resident Evil is honestly no fun at all. I just turned off my brain to watch it and still had enough. I started watching the Netflix Resident Evil show and I've never felt that this thing, this isn't it feeling so hard because of the influence of political correctness. I had to stop watching and I even liked Wesker. Now, Remember a couple of years ago, we said that Capcom was supposedly circulating a memo about uh, being more politically correct and more sensitive to the West's uh, needs. And I have to wonder if this isn't starting to manifest with Resident Evil. And I guess, um, wasn't it Facebook that censored one of the Resident Evil remakes for VR? I think it was Resident Evil 4. I, I'm, I'm, my memory is a little bit foggy, but I think they were censoring uh, Resident Evil because, again, this, this mandate that seems to be going around Capcom right now that you need to be more politically correct. The new Netflix Resident Evil drama is such a waste of time. I dumped it. Again, these are Japanese viewers. And uh, they, they do mention in the article that the Japanese tend to be more forgiving of live action adaptations because God knows they've had some really terrible ones. As checking out Netflix Resident Evil... Couldn't get over how egotistical the female protagonist was. I watched the Netflix Resident Evil. It was just stressful. The producers just don't get it. All we need for Resident Evil is explore, run away, and escape. We don't need any of this human drama bullshit. Same could be said for the Transformers movies, by the way. They could have just made a live-action revelations that would have definitely been more fun. Uh, I heard that Netflix Resident Evil is terrible. Too bad we can't make Japanese movies, but with American money. Uh, then we can hold back in the American-level political correctness. Ooh. It's fine to have black people in there, but don't go around changing characters that were originally white. That's such a selfish change based on one's own convenience. It was okay. The part that Americans really don't seem to understand the most is why, why feel the need to change the race or gender of already existing characters? Why not just make a Resident Evil with a new story and new characters and they can pack it full of uh, black people, people of color? These are not very good translations. Um, doesn't seem like black people are particularly happy about it. It's probably a vocal minority nonsense. If so, it's probably a handful of people on Twitter, uh, a handful of white women on Twitter are like, finally, the representation uh, that uh, the black people deserve, whether they want it or not. Uh, did they think they could make something so boring and hide behind the shield of political correctness? Netflix originals are always full of weird shit. Congratulations, Capcom. Deep, dark fantasy. Resident Evil 5 has a bunch of black people, so why not bring them out for that? Um, yeah, so people just not happy about this movie. Uh, Forbes, Forbes, Paul Tassie, Resident Evil Season 2 on Netflix feels increasingly unlikely to happen. Remember Cowboy Bebop uh, debuted at number one, too, I believe. It's first week. And then once people watched it, they were like, wow, wow, this show is dog shit. And it got canceled right away. And I have to think that this, this show was produced during a different time at Netflix. This show was produced before Netflix was hemorrhaging viewers. Um, you know, I mean, and I think now Netflix is going to take a good hard look at, especially losing over a million subs and this thing, uh, uh, garnering nothing but negative word of mouth. And they're going to look at it and be like, yeah, we're not doing it anymore. We're not doing it anymore of this uh and capcom whoever the hell typed up that memo that's going around your office saying that the west wants political correctness fire them just fire them because they're wrong they're dead wrong gonna wrap it up please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later